Bartosz Wodzisławski, right? Um, from Poland. Okay, hello everyone. So this is like the topic of my talk. It's a little fancy words. I feel that if I put many fancy words into my presentation then it will get accepted as it's working, like you can see. So hello, my name is Bartosz Bojislawski and I would like to start with a little disclaimer that I'm talking about my opinions, I'm like not representing any company or anything, it's just those are just my opinions and you don't have to agree with them, you can argue with them and I would be happy to talk about them. So my name is Bartosz. Uh, it can be pretty hard for to read for people who are not familiar with Polish language. So it's easier to have it like this. There's much more people who can read this like Bartosz. And, but still some people are reading it like Bartosz. Uh, and uh, if you are not like Slavic or something, uh, you can call me just um, you can just call me Bart. It's short and it's simple and it's okay for me. Okay, so uh, I don't want to explain how to pronounce my last name because it's like Boislavski. So uh, who am I? Uh, so I'm a the developer with Love for Rubies. I was developing Colac, I was developing .NET, I was doing some Java, JavaScript, and everything. So I know few technologies like that exist. At the moment, I'm a freelance software engineer at TopTal, so I'm just doing some job to them. And it's my first time in Chisinau. Uh, I've already tried your great dishes like Mama Liga and Placinta, I think. They were really great, and I want to try them again today. Uh, in my free time, I'm writing. Oh, I'm writing this thing, uh, and then my writer skill. Yeah, you're cool. Okay, uh, so I came from Warsaw, a little bit far, I think. Uh, it's pretty nice here because, like today, I saw pictures in Poland that it's snowing right there, so it's pretty cold. I don't know why. I came here from Warsaw, and I have, uh, like, I feel almost like in home. I went to shop yesterday, and I found like seven pieces of pizza. It's like, I don't know if you can pronounce the, all the names, in the, but I found this in shop. This is from Poland. And it's like my favorite celery paste, and you call it brinza somehow, I don't know why, but you know, I, I felt almost like in home, and then I came here and I found śmietanka uh, to kawy łaciata. So it's it's Polish too, so I, I feel like I'm at home. Uh, okay, so let's get to you. Uh, something like one year ago, I was working for a little project. Uh, it was like, maybe not into project. Uh, it was open source e-commerce solution for Ruby on Rails. Uh, and its name is Spring. Do you know Spring? Okay, great. So you know what the deal. So we wanted to build a new API like mod for modern tech stuff, so we could use it e easily with JavaScript, it could be easily with integrated with mobile application and everything. All the API wasn't good for that. So I was like the person who was behind all the transformation and there was a question how to handle the business logic in 10 years old open source Ruby on Rails project used by thousands of dev developers world. It's a lot of people, a lot of code. Like there were, I think there were over 700 of contributors to that code base over 10 years. It started during the times of phase one. So there were a little bit of legacy code. So I was looking for best solutions because, uh, like, you know, there is there was one solution used that it's called the base way, like doing callbacks, controllers, models, validations, everything put everywhere. And you know, the rest way is great, like really great, unless you're not base camp. It works for them, but for some bigger applications, maybe it's not so okay. And of course, you are not the, you are not base camp. We are not base camp, so I didn't think that we can go with the way way more. So I decided to look further. Uh, what was the history of handling business logic in Rails? So first, we started with Spark controllers. We were putting all the logic in controllers. We were like 
one actually could have like 100 lines of code. Okay, it's normal. But after some time, we decided that it's not so good, it's hard to test, it, and it's getting messy. So we go into skin control spot models. Actually, it was just moving the same problem into another place. It didn't have too much. We still had the same problems. And then we decided that, okay, maybe not models, find some some other place. So we found concerns. So we are putting everything into concerns. And it was just moving uh, our problem from one place to another, and moving to another place, and we still had the same problems. And then, in 2012, there was a great blog post published on Code Climate Blog. It was about seven patterns to refactor fat active effort models. Do you know that blog post? Yeah, it's classic. So, so one of the rules there was uh, extra service objects. Do you know service objects? Like, who knows service objects? Okay, so you know, and I wanted to know what is like service object. I use service object before, but I wanted to know what is like the definition, what does good service object do, so I googled. And as you can see, all the results are just are about race, 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 race. I didn't like it because you know if it's like working only one technology, it's something wrong because uh, we are we can think that we as Ruby developers are really smart people, we develop new things, so we, we are like better than others, and we can find better solutions, but I don't, don't believe it. I think that we are just like any other technology developers and we couldn't think of like a new way of handling everything, so I dig further. I asked my friends from another technologies. So I started with a friend who's doing Java, uh, and he was like service objects, and, uh, service layer. Oh, okay. And uh, the, the developer said the same. He was like service layer, so I was like, okay, it's getting close, so maybe it's not. <coughs> so maybe it's something similar, but I will ask more people. Then I ask even PHP friend. PHP friend, you know. <laughs> <laughs> and he said that they have service layer in the Laravel. And Laravel is heavily inspired by Rails, so I was like, okay, so it's really, it must be something. Oh, and I asked no GS friend, and he was like, <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay. So I Googled uh, service layer, and I found Martin Fowler below. Martin Fowler is a great guy, if I was mentioning him. You know, best post from Martin Fowler. So, service layer defines an application boundary and its set of available operations from the perspective on interfacing client layers. So, what is client layer? Let's say it can be our website, it can be our mobile application, it can be anything to, that interacts with our service. So, it's just uh, basically it means that this is the set of operations that we can run on our data, on our system. So like creating user and everything. So it's just defining what can you user do with our service, like actions. So let's assume that uh, service objects are just implemented on service layer in the Ruby community. And next question, how does good service object look? Do we have like standard for, for service object in our community? Like, did someone say like, this is the only way of doing service objects that can be good, and everything else is like done. Uh, of course, we don't have we like we like different solutions. Everyone wants to have their own solutions. Uh, I I talked with many developers, and few things that I took off from that it was like the first rule is just pick an object. Uh, we like to run uh, like class methods, we don't want to create new instances, but it's not giving uh, us too much of advantage of that, just, we are not just writing new and it's like, wow, we are cool. But I really like it, having uh, control over constructor because we can pass dependencies, we can use it for many things like initialization. It, it was created for that and we need that for a like, few things that I will mention later. And uh, second rule is uh, be simple, easy to understand. I think this is probably the most important one. Uh, 
because it's better to like when you have to introduce new developer, it's better to don't have like many new custom D DSL, magic, and everything. Um, so it's pretty important too. Uh, one public instance is not called the Y. So Ruby is objected object-oriented programming, so everything is an object, and everything responds to different methods. Even objects like method, uh, prop, lambda, and they always, they always have uh, like um, the same interface. You can use call on them and pass params to them, so they are comp compatible with each other, and we can replace them whenever we need, so it's kind of useful for us. Uh, and it, if you have call methods, it's like defining that this will be the operation. So you can like create user dot call. It's like proper English, let's say. Uh, and use instance variables only for the presences using constructor. This is kind of tricky because we like to pass data like creating instance variable and then reuse it in few methods. But it's getting like into some kind of spaghetti, and we don't know when it when it was changed, when it was not changed. So. I like to keep on independences, so if we use one service object in another service object, we can just use it in constructor, and everything else should go to call method. And the uh, last uh, rule that I wanted to have is like returning list of objects, right? So we can always expect that uh, the type of return data will be, uh, it will be always the same. So we can call the same methods on that, we can Check if it was successful or not because I, I've met many situations where people are, when something went wrong in service software, they returned new, they returned false, they were returning different things, and you could never expect what will you get from that. And it was, it's like hard to maintain in future. Um, so those were the rules that I wanted to have, like comply and solutions. We have many solutions in Ruby. In Ruby. So the first group I want to talk is uh, interactor and derivatives. Who is this interactor on daily basis? Okay, there are a few people, so you know interactor. Interactor, I think it was the first game to introduce the concept, and it, it, it was followed by many. So, for, when we are looking at this, it's pretty like, easy to understand, but, uh, there is one problem that I have with interactor. It's called context. What is context? It's just like open structure, like structure that we can put anything. And even if we do some typo, we will mistake the name of uh, data we want. We get all, always get in. We don't get any validation of data that it is getting into interactor. We cannot pass anything that it can be not used. It's it's like. Mm, how to tell? It's, it introduces a lot of magic that is not required here. You know, in my opinion, I like the busyness. Uh, and passing data to that. As you can see, we are not creating content here, so there is no way to pass dependencies to interactor. So you can just use call, and we are just pass, passing hash with params. And there, are no, there is no validation. There is no, no way that we can validate if it will work or not. So. It's not good for me. And uh, then action logic, it's like one step further. Uh, we still have context. It's really similar solution to interactor, but there is one thing that was included in that, and th this is validates before and validates after. So now we can validate parents, we can validate output, so we can know that if it was successful or not. It's in my opinion it's better, but then we have method execute. I don't know why. Uh, and we are implementing method call, so mistake. It's easy to mistake the name, and then it's not compatible with prop lambda, etc. So I don't like it. And there is active interaction again, which is like pushing this even more, even further. And so we define params with types, so which is pretty nice already. I really like this solution, it reminds me of uh, the right start and everything. Uh, but then we have execute methods, 
I don't know why you are having different names for same method. Uh, and then uh, uh, we have outcome. You can check if it was valid or not. Uh, then we can get the result. It's pretty nice. Uh, but it's getting pretty complicated. We have like many, many options in that game. We can have validation, we can have running it with farms and It's doing a lot of magic stuff. I'm using this for one of my projects, and I didn't choose it. I just got it. I just got into project with that. And even I, after years of development, I have problems with understanding what happens when. Uh, oh, we have error messages, which is pretty nice. And they are the callbacks. Like we don't want callbacks in controllers. We don't want callbacks in models. We want to get rid of callbacks, and then we get callbacks in service objects, which is like. Uh, Ivan mentioned that it's better to don't use callbacks in uh, state machines, and I would say that don't use callbacks in service objects too. Uh, so this is the group of interactor-based solutions. They are pretty similar. They all have uh, this context stuff, uh, like returning in here, and not not so not so explicit solution. So and that is the uh, second group of solutions. And it's, I call it Monad-like solutions. Uh, do you know Monad? Do we have any Casper developer here? Yeah, we have Casper developers, so I won't make fun of functional programmers, maybe. Because do you know how to recognize functional programmer? You don't have to, he will tell you. For sure. uh, okay, so what is Monad? Uh, let's get to another classic. Monad is just a monoid in the category of endocompress. What's the problem? It's important, right? It's just a typical Haskell developer. But uh, I don't want to explain monads. I'm not experienced enough to that. Like, it's a really huge concept. I want to focus on one monad, and this is it's monad either. Uh, either is pretty nice monad that's used widely. We can maybe we don't know even even we can uh, I don't know. Sorry. Uh, um, okay. So either uh, represent values with just two possibilities. We have uh, uh, left or right. Then let's assume that left is bad and right is okay. So we, in all the cases, we have only have two cases of the result. Uh, this is the best for something called railway oriented programming, which is like more familiar term for us. It was introduced in I don't know when it was introduced, but it was introduced by a guy from F-Sharp community, like a .NET developer, and I think he was pretty smart, because he explained Monad either with very really simple word uh, and images. So, Monad either is basically like having success of our failure path. Now, on different input, we have, can have two different paths, and uh, in Let's say that we can have some creating object or something. Uh, so let's say that first step of our operation or interaction or whatever we call it is validating. So if validation passed, we can go to next steps, which would be updating database. And if, it, if validation is very bad, just by passing, we are just skipping all the operations that were after that, and we can return error easily. So you can say that you just use if else, why why do you even think about it? But if else sometimes is not good for us, and let's see some PHP code. Uh, okay, are you ready for PHP code? So this happens if you are going too deep into if else. Of course you can deal with that, but it's not like the best solution. And I would like to propose uh, solutions that we have in Ruby. The first one is waterfall. Uh, do you know waterfall? I, it's it's first get to introduce the regular oriented programming to Ruby, but I think that it's pretty complicated. Like, do you know what happens it's here? Like chain when policy down chain and then on down. Uh, introducing new developer to that is really complicated. Even I have problems when I see code written in, in waterfall. If 
there is someone to explain it to me, I will understand it, but like, uh, you know, I, I put this course into my presentation, like, I think it was one year ago, and I have no idea what it's doing now. So, it's not a good solution for me that even I forget what is, what is it doing. So, we have like, new fancy word, DSL, change, policy, and then chaining again. I wouldn't like to work with that code. So there is another solution. It's called Tape Laser Operation. Do you know Tape Laser? Like, how many of you dream with me? So, you know, I really like Nick, I like his style, I like his talks. But um, this solution was good for me because it's introducing a lot of new DSL. I want to keep it simple. And it's like we have this contract, we have validators, properties, then. Um, it, you need some time to like get into it, to understand everything, to know the solution. And I don't want to do it because I want to keep everything simple. Uh, there is one more solution that I want to present, which is direct transaction. Uh, do you know dry RB? Okay, I have a very great community here. So let's see that simple example. Uh, do I have arrows here? Yes, I have. So, first, uh, it will require us to create an object. We don't have any initializer here, but it's implicitly implicit created based on steps. So, you have three steps. Like you can have many steps. Let's start with a simple example. You have three steps, which are just named prepare, validate, finalize. And we can use the like for methods, we can define methods with those names and they will be called in, the, in that order. Input is passed from one from another. Um, so we have simple method for that. Um, and we can, uh, and then we, we are using monad either here. Underneath it's using dry monads and monad either for that. And we have success and failure, so it's our left and right. I think there was some time that it was called with left and right, but they name it after some time. So if, if in our first method there is nothing that can go wrong, so we are just passing the success. And then we are doing some, let's say, validation to so simple case just to show up. So if we if our organizer input will be new, we should like return a payload and we don't want to call finalize. Uh, and as you can see, we are just creating object with uh, that new dot call. Uh, we are passing organizer uh, as community because we have a community. We can organize uh, conferences by community, and everything is fine. We, we got success in the end, and the output is like organized community. Uh, what if we didn't pass organizer? We got failure. Last step wasn't called because the, the second step stopped processing data. And then, so. We got failure, we can check that it was failure. For me, it's very really simple and clean solution. Uh, we can do so called dependency injection. It's, I know we are Ruby developers, we are cool, we don't want to use enterprise stuff, and this comes from enterprise Java. We are scared of that, but I would propose if, you, if your project is growing bigger and bigger, you should use solutions from other technologies. Ivan was talking about this. That it's good to use solutions from other technologies, so that's why you, it's worth to that. that other languages like Elixir, Java, .NET, whatever. Just, if you know more of them, it will uh, influence your code and it will make your code better because you are always learning from other technologies and they are they're usually older technologies, like they have bigger projects, they have more experience, it's really worth for learning. So we can prepare this operation and then so, uh, instead, uh, we don't want to have organizer which would be neat. So, if it's new, we are making it community. And then, uh, in the constructor, in new, we have this step, step named prepare. And we are passing object. We can pass uh, lambda here, bro, maybe new method. We are just passing this object here, so it's easy to combine many objects into one uh, transaction operation. So we have this injected operation of conference, and even if we didn't pass organizer, our new injected uh, operation is sending it to community, 
So we have success. Oh, it's like I wanted to show that it's getting here. Uh, uh, is it perfect solutions? Of course, it's not perfect. I don't have a few parts of that. Like uh, I just showed you only steps. There are like another step adapters and if you saw those steps and the methods, it was easy to understand. But if when we have bar try bar t, we we are getting like what's this? And so it's a little bit over complicated. But if you don't use too much, too much. To man too much of magic from that, it will be a really good solution. And mm, of course, service objects are not perfect solution for handling business logic. So we can think about going further. We can have like DDD, like domain event design. There was talk about this. We can go command query responsibility set. We can go event sourcing. We can go apply many, many uh, things that we can do with code, but. Uh, I think they are worth after we, when if you, your project gets really big. And for the start, I would suggest going with service objects. And what's the best solution? Uh, I would say it depends. If you have something in your project that just keep it, like I said, I have active interaction in one of my projects, and like, I'm not changing it to the transaction because I like it more. I'm keeping it. Uh, if it's in project, then it's already in there. And I would suggest to don't change it. So what's the best solution? I would say that's just the simple solution. And I would like you to remember that just keep keep your code simple, keep service objects simple, just keep everything simple and it will make your life easier. And thank you. <laughs> you can find me on Twitter, Merit, I'm not using too much of it. Social media at the moment, but you can find me here. Any questions? Spring? No? 
Okay, uh, because the last time I did, I put this into slides and they wanted, the people suggested me to remove it so people can ask something. So about Spree, I, I think I did the worst case scenario and I implemented it by myself. Please don't do this. Use existing solutions as much as you can because writing your code from scratch is, can, can be a little bit painful for you in the future. Do you have any questions? Did I hear? Hi. Uh, you mentioned that you like uh, the idea when we have only one call method and then pass all the, all the arguments to it. Yes. Uh, what the, like, uh, then in that case, uh, we have to pass uh, like all, either all the arguments we receive to private methods or like part of the received arguments to private methods and like we pass them deeper and deeper like to the call stack. What do you think about it? Isn't it bad? Is it, wouldn't it be better to pass all the arguments in the initializer and then call uh, method call without any arguments? Uh. Of course, like in, your, in, like in all cases, it depends because if you have like really responsible team and you will ensure that no one touches the, this data in different methods, so you are sure that this like your instance method isn't changed during the runtime, then I think it's okay to keep them. But if you uh, if you are not sure about your developers and someone will edit this data and you will get random results because of that you can have a like, few problems with that. So basically, if we don't maintain the, ob the, the object, then it's okay to pass all the arguments to each other. Yes, it's okay, then I can. It's just for keeping your copy rules. Okay, I think that's all.